Over 80 years ago, engineer Dykes and Canals turned the Holland Marsh from a swampland into one of the richest agricultural belts in all of Canada. But over the past eight decades, the canal system has degraded. A 10-year engineering study commissioned by the town of Bradford, West Gwillimbury, highlighted three key concerns regarding the canal's present state and outlined the work needed to improve them. So began the Holland Marsh Drainage System Canal Improvement Project. Drainage Superintendent Frank Jonkman is project manager. The main purposes of the project are to deal with uh, flood protection for the marsh, life safety along the uh, municipal or, and township roads uh, that are around the marsh, and as well as the uh, uh, maintenance issues that we have with the old canal system. One issue that has developed over time is the use of the dikes built on the exterior of the canals. Their original purpose was to act as barriers against flooding. Today, they are used as roadways. The dikes were never intended to be roads, but as time went on, the dikes became roads and development happened along the marsh. Uh, when the dikes were developed or, or allowed to be roads, that's when we started having life safety issues. In fact, 18 people have died as a result of going into the canal. A second key point of concern is the construction of the dikes themselves. Namely, they weren't built to withstand a 50-year storm event. In 1954, the dike system failed when Hurricane Hazel tore through this area, causing the entire marsh to be flooded. The emergency repairs done proved to be detrimental because existing berms were removed, leaving the canal in its present state. Generally, anywhere that the dikes have been used as roads, the canal is being moved its full width away from the road. Uh, anywhere that there's been development on the outside of the marsh where we can't move the canals, we actually are putting up guide rails and that to protect the, the road from, from the, the uh, water course. Approximately 18 kilometers of canal will be moved anywhere from 24 to 27 meters from their current position. So we actually will be creating a, a buffer between the roadway and, and the water course. Uh, also part of what we're doing with that is we're, we're installing a, a swell and catch basin system along the roads to deal with hydrocarbons and salts that come off of off the roadway. Part of uh, what we expect this project to accomplish in moving the canals with the added buffer strips and, uh, is to actually have an improvement in the water quality that is outflowing from the Holland Marsh system into Lake Simcoe. One of the most common misconceptions about the Holland Marsh and its farming practices is this algae that you see is actually a result of the phosphorus runoff from the fertilizer. But in fact, this algae is a result of the surrounding municipalities draining into this basin-like structure. There's, uh, there's 64,000 acres of land that drain into the, into the Holland Marsh Basin. The, uh, the waters that are in the canal system are not from the Holland Marsh. Uh, it is from upstream landowners and everything comes this way. What is flowing into the canal is a combination of hydrocarbons, phosphorus, pesticides and a large quantity of sediment. We have actually areas of the canals that have been completely filled in with sediments that are coming from upstream. With the new canal system we actually are constructing areas that we will be known uh, control points for sediments that are coming into the marsh uh, and we will be maintaining those areas on about a five year cycle. Uh, meaning that the canals will never be subject again to, to sediment loading from upstream. The canal system is vitally important to the irrigation of the marsh. And to understand how important this agricultural area is, these 7,000 acres produce over half a billion dollars in revenue yearly. They grow over 35 different kinds of vegetables, and the soil is considered to be some of the most nutrient dense in all of Canada. Even though the, the canal system is a, is a man-made system, it's, it's actually uh, become host to a number of different species. Uh, there, there's uh, numerous fish species. Uh, one of the interesting things about this project is uh, you know, locally knowing that in the mid-80s, uh, fish were actually leaving the area. And we actually find more fish species actually coming back. Uh, again, I think that's contributable to the, uh, uh, the fish enhancements that we're doing as part of the work, which includes littoral shelves, gravel substrates, root masses, log bundles and that, that, that provide protection to the varying species when they're, when they're spawning. The entire project has been subjected to a Canadian environmental assessment to ensure the work will not do any harm to the environment. Although numerous trees had to be removed to allow the relocation, certain species will remain. 
in this area we found butternut trees which are listed as an endangered species. Um, when you find those, we actually have MNR involved. They come out and do an assessment on the trees. Uh, this is actually a very healthy stand of trees. Uh, therefore, we will not be removing the, the, these trees from this area. We'll be working around them. The area of canal known as Interval 1 was completed a year ago and natural restoration has already occurred. This parcel was used as a testing area to calculate the cost of the entire project, which is around $26 million. The landowners who benefit from the restoration will shoulder around 75% of the cost and 25% from the municipalities within the watershed. A grant of $10.2 million from the Ontario Municipal Infrastructure Initiative will help offset that entire cost, and the project is due to be completed in 2015. If you'd like to learn more about the Canal Restoration Project, you can visit us online at rogerstv.com forward slash a greener york.